top, it is a hot topic for us because uh, making your application scalable is one of our top priorities. And we all know that expansion is a natural evolution for any businesses and the software application that runs as a backbone to your business. So when the size of your application grows, so as the resource consumption and requirements. Now, obviously, the preemptive uh, multi-thread support in 4D is here to enable you to take full advantage of your multi-core machines, the machines that you spend a lot of money in and invest it for your business. And by having more processes, uh, memory and users simply means that you are uh, going to have a higher performance workloads and productivities. Now based on, on some of your feedbacks um, well, given to us, um, many of you have already started to use and uh, take advantage of the preemptive uh, programming in 4D and that's really good news to us. Uh, we spent a lot of effort in making it uh, available to you and I think uh, this is really um, uh, create a big effort from our engineering department. So I'd really like to give them a big round of applause uh, quickly. <laughs> now just to recap, there are some of the things that we've done so far since version 16. And uh, we gave you the preemptive process through the use of workers. You also have the preemptive uh, web server, and this is really huge. Uh, I'm a big uh, uh, fan of uh, web serving and web design in 4D. So this makes things a lot better in terms of implementation and operations. And finally, over 1,000 commands are now considered threat safe in version 17. That is a really big effort uh, that we push to make it available to you. So one of the biggest challenge when we talk about um, preemptive process in 4D uh, or any um, applications is, has to do with the fact that the process runs independently and um, they are isolated from others. Um, information cannot be passed or shared easily from one process to another without breaking the law of preemptive multi-thread architecture. And in the best practice, what you want to do is you want to share as little information as possible between the processes, mostly to avoid any kind of a contention. And when we, when we talk about contention, we often resort back to the use of semaphores to help us out. But um, using semaphores sometimes can be difficult and tricky. If you don't do it correctly, you don't program it correctly, it could cause some serious problem or deadlocks. So we have to come up with something that provide you with an alternative uh, way to deal with that type of usage, allowing you to pass information from one process to another without breaking any rule or law of the multi-thread programming. And I think we found it. Um, a new way, um, easy and flexible way to share information among processes. And that's through the use of shared objects. And I think I'm just gonna show you the demo because it's gonna explain a lot of what I'm talking about better. So here I have a simple um, database. I'm gonna show you the method that I'm going to execute in a minute. But as you can see, this method has a few lines of code. Um, I'm going to start from the top, okay? Um, I have a C object variable declared as a local variable. Now, this variable I'm going to pass into another or uh, other two processes um, at uh, line number nine and number 10, but let's look down at line number two. The variable is being initialized as new shared object. Now, this is a new command. Basically, it set a specific unique properties to this variable. If you look down, I'm gonna go ahead and um, specify some properties to this object variable, three properties. And if you notice, uh, I did it with inside of the use block. 
Now use and end use, these are two new keywords. You will um, call these keywords when you want to make modification to your shared object variable. And it's required, um, this again, we'll come back to it and you'll have a better idea of why you need to do this. Let me highlight that and just kind of show you where it is. Now let's go down to line number nine and number 10. And this is simply um, spawning two new processes um, that I'm going to pass my variable to. At the end, I'm passing my shared object variable. In the normal um, uh, variable, if you have an object variable, not the shared object variable, when you do something like this, a copy of that object is actually being passed to your new process. In this case, because the variable itself has been initialized to, uh, to be a shared object, its reference is what being passed into those two new processes. Let's go ahead and execute the methods. Okay, here I have um, two debuggers representing two processes. I'm gonna go ahead and add my variables to the expression area. I'm gonna do it for both debuggers. At the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and expand the content from uh, process two and then go back to process one just to show you that they are actually identical. And yes, because they are coming from the same source. Now, at the moment, none of these are making any kind of um, modification to the variable just yet. So what I want to do now is from process number one, I'm gonna go ahead and um, execute a few lines, start from use, that's telling 4D that I would like to make modification to my variable. And the next line, which is line number six, is where I'm assigning my property, uh, which is a text property. As if I'm going to process number two, you can see right away that the change I made from process number one reflect um, in process number two as well. At the same time, if you look where my cursor is, you see busy, right? 4D is telling you or that process that the object itself is being um, accessed by someone else, so you have to wait if you want to make modification. Now I'm gonna go back to process number one and just finish the rest of my execution just by, okay, go through that. At the end, when I call and use command and go back to process two, you can see that my object is no longer set to busy, which means that that process can now acquire the right access to my variable, which I'm doing right now. After I'm done with my modification in process two, if I go back to process one, the information updated properly. So this is really cool because it shows you that you can now passing and sharing information among processes just by doing um, something like this, using the same um, variable in many um, processes. Okay, so that's just a simple example. So, so far we've seen just a, an isolated um, uh, processes. Now, what about um, sharing information at the global standpoint, global scale within the whole application? Um, this is a big topic because there's been a lot of discussion about this. The first thing I want to kind of bring up is it's always important to keep reminding ourselves that the use of inter-process variable are not permitted in preemptive programming, okay? So it breaks the rule and the law of the multi-thread architecture. So we have to come up with a new way again, and that new way is called storage. So the storage, in this case, is a catalog of shared objects, which I described earlier. Now, you can access storage from any running processes and without having to 
ask for the, to grant you permission, you can read from storage, from anywhere. The only time that you have to ask for D for permission because we want to avoid contention, that's when you want to make modification or write to your storage. And that's through the use of the, uh, through, through the execution of the use keywords. Now, although it may appear that uh, there's so many use cases that you can probably think right now because this is something that many of you probably have been waiting for, but I would urge you, and we actually thought about this, be selective about your selection, right? Um, the best way to share information among processes is still through the use of just the shared objects. Now, if you don't have any other choices, that you have certain requirements, the storage is also there for you. So be selective about your choice. Now, later on today, Laurent Eno is going to be talking about this particular feature in more detail uh, in his session. So feel free to join him and uh, ask any kind of questions that you have. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep, leave it at that. But let's go ahead and um, move on to the next example which covering the storage. I'm just gonna give you a simple example. Now, normally we um, specify something in the on startup so that we can probably use later. It's almost like a, a constant in a sense, right? So in this case, I have an on startup here and I'm going to create a property inside of my storage. Now, this property is basically my connection setting that I'm going to be using at later time. So you can see I have URL, um, username, and password specified in the storage. And it's you know, done the similar fashion, uh, fashion as shared object. So I'm calling use command. Storage is a function or a command that returns the reference to the storage. Um, and then from inside, you can just simply use the dot notation to specify um, your data or your property. And I'm, again, I'm using the command um, new shared object because the storage could store the collection, uh, uh, has a, a collection of shared um, objects or collections. Now, at a later time, let's say I have another method and I want to take advantage of my storage. I want to make a call to my HTTP server. I can simply write my code like this. Very simple and very powerful. This way, you now have access uh, to um, the information at the global standpoint. And as you can see, um, this is really fast uh, in terms of accessing your data and without needing to explicit um, uh, uh, tells, ask for the for protection to the object. The, again, it's, it's quite easy to code and it's really um, give you a way to avoid any kind of contention and provide a safe uh, in terms of coding. It is Pretty intuitive in terms of um, uh, what you want to do and use with it. Um, it also provides protection to your object and its subdata. So now you've seen the information, uh, how you can share information in preemptive uh, environments. Uh, I'm hoping that making your preemptive um, ready. Um, application preemptive ready is something that is on your development radar. And um, whether it's for existing project or future project. Okay, so that's the, all the time I have for you guys uh, this morning. I hope you like what you see. And um, the next uh, presenter I'm gonna bring up on stage is Caroline Brio from Footy Friends. Come on up. Thank you.